Okay, so today what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to use a hump mold right here, a banding wheel, a slab, and a pin tool with a little metal rib, these five objects. Together, I'm gonna to show you how to turn, make a bowl. The bowl that you're gonna make is gonna look like this. Now, it's not cleaned up yet. This is the bowl after day one, but we're gonna use the mold to shape the bowl. Then we're gonna put the foot ring on. Then we're gonna flip it over and we'll have our bowl. The next day, we'll clean up the rim. Okay, if you don't know how to use the slab roller to make a slab, you should stop this video and watch this how to use the slab roller video to make sure you know how to make your slab. It's important at the last stage of that video, it explains compressing the clay with a metal rib. It's important that on both sides of your clay, you compress with a metal rib. The first thing that we're going to need to do is grab our banding wheel. We'll take our mold and we'll place this on top of our banding wheel. There are concentric rings on all the banding wheels. Try to put the mold in the center of the banding wheel. It doesn't need to be perfect, but the closer, the better. Second step is to take our slab and put the slab on top of our mold. When the slab goes on top of the mold, it won't rest naturally on the mold. This process takes a little bit of time and be patient. You're gonna take your hands and very slowly press the clay onto the mold. When you get one side down, if you push immediately to the other side, it will lift up the side you just did. Take your time, press each side down. When you have excess that you know you're not going to use because the bolt ends here, cut off the excess, it will make this easier. You want to lift up the sides as you push it down to encourage it to stretch itself down. Avoid having the clay fold. The biggest mistake you can make is to let it fold on itself. Make sure that your slab is stretched out. Once you have your clay pressed tightly against the mold, it'll now be time to cut the top level. Get the clay as tight as you can against the mold before we begin to cut. If there is some creasing on the bottom, this will just be something you'll have to clean up later. We want to spin the bowl on the mold, holding our pin tool as still as we can. We want to draw a straight line. Try not to cut through while you draw your line. If it goes through on one side, sometimes the mold will come off. Once you have your line drawn all the way around the outside, 
as low as you possibly can on the form. Do not draw your line up here. We want the line as low as we can. Place the pin tool tip into the line, hold your hand steady, and slowly turn the wheel. Remove the excess clay. We'll have a chance to clean the rim up later. If your clay is soft, you can take the pieces from your rim, squeeze them together, and we can roll a coil for our foot. When rolling a coil, it's important that your table have some moisture in it so that your slab, your coil does not dry out when you roll it. When you roll your coil, we want to make sure we have a thick coil. That has no thin spots. You can stretch the coil by throwing it down gently and by rolling. When you roll a coil, do not push down hard. Use the weight of your hands only and move side to side. When you have your coil made, you'll need your bowl back. When working on the bowl, again, make sure the bowl is as close to the center of the banding wheel as you can get it. One way to do this is to use your pin tool, spin the wheel, Hold the pin tool straight, and whatever side it touches on, let it only touch on one side. Find the line where it touched. My line is from here to here. Find the center of the line and gently push the bowl forward. Now your pot will be more centered. Now it's time for us to determine where we're going to put our foot. When you put the foot on the wheel or on the bowl, you don't want it to be too wide and you don't want it to be too narrow. If I put a foot here, my bowl would have a very small foot and would tip over. If I put the foot way out here, the bowl might sit on this point and the foot and rock back and forth. Somewhere in between too wide and too narrow is just right. I'm going to use this line here. I will lightly scratch the outer ring of my bowl this step is not necessary if the clay is very wet, but if you're afraid of it coming off, scratching prevents separation of two items. It helps them stick together. Notice when I scratch it, one hand moves, the other hand turns the wheel. If your clay is dry, you might use water. The water will act like a glue. Now I'm going to take my coil and wrap it on the top. Where the coil will connect, I will use my pen tool and I want to cut not at a straight line. I don't want the connection to be like this. 
if I put the connection together like this, it's likely to separate when it's drying. When I make the connection, I want it to be cut at an angle. This side is cut at an angle. This side will be cut at the matching angle so that when they go together, they blend together like this. Not like this, like this. I can take this coil off and attach my coil separately first so I can make sure that it's blended together well and that the seam isn't extra thick. Now that I have my little circle, I can place that on my bowl, press down, and then I'm going to pinch and push down with my fingers, pinch and push down all the way around. I'm pinching from the inside and the outside, and I'm joining these two pieces of clay together. I'm trying to repeat the same process all the way around the bowl evenly. I don't want to squeeze harder on one side than another side. Once you've gotten all the way around, there's nothing wrong with going a little more. You can grab a sponge. This sponge has a little bit of water in it. And I can put my sponge on the top of my bowl and I can squeeze it over my finger and push down. When I do this, it will help seal the foot ring onto the bowl and also help smooth it out. We'll clean things up later. I can use my sponge to clean up the inside. I can use my sponge to clean up the outside. While my bowl is still wet, this is a good time to take away any inconsistencies or bumps on the outside. Now that my foot ring is attached, I'll be able to clean it up and smooth it out later. If I want this foot ring to be thinner or shorter, I can also cut it with my pen tool the same way that I cut the bottom of my pot. I could cut off some of my foot ring. I'm going to smooth the foot ring out by spinning and squeezing my fingers together. This will help thin the foot ring out and also help join it. Now my foot ring is better attached. I can clean up the inside with my finger or with a tool. Now I need to clean up the outside. I will use my metal rib. I make sure that the rib is clean on its edge. Then I will turn the wheel holding my metal rib flush to the pot, not at a right angle, but at an acute angle. And I can smear the little bit of water to fix all of the bumps in the side. I might have to go up and down to get some of the bumps. The best time to do this is while the clay is still a little wet, it goes a little bit faster. Now that I have my bowl cleaned, I can clean up the inside rings if I don't want those to show. But now I'm ready to take my board put my board on the base of my bowl, grab the mold, put your hand on the board, and flip it over. Remove the mold, and now I have a bowl. Any place where there was a crease on the outside, there will also be a crease on the inside. The rim, I'll show you how to clean up in another video, when this bowl is a little drier, these little holes here, you can just fill with clay. Take a small piece of clay, it's easy to do this today, and fill in those little gaps. You can also do this on the second day, depending on how wet your bowl is.
Do not try to pick up or move your bowl. It's very, very wet. We want to keep the bowl round. We'll be able to clean things up when it dries a little bit. This is a bowl that I made earlier. If I wanted to start trying to clean up the rim of this bowl, I could use a sponge, put the bowl in the middle of my wheel, and just start spinning it. The sponge will help smooth things out. I'm letting the sponge wrap around the outside of the bowl, and I'm gently squeezing in as I turn the banding wheel. The longer I let this turn, the smoother my rim will become. The rim is already smoother, but it's still a little sharp. At this point, I could pinch. I could use my paddle and make a design by pressing into the rim. Or I could take a tool and I could smooth out the angle. The paddle would work for this, a rib would work for this, and your hands would work for this. You don't want the rim to be a 90 degree angle. You want the rim to come to a point that is not sharp, but is a rounded point. So I've made the inside beveled. I'm gonna go around and make the outside beveled. Then I will take my sponge and I will smooth it out. There's much more smoothing that you can do but the refining process can be done so many ways, it's best if you discover which way works best for you.